Yo, what's up Giants fans, Hub Watchers, YouTube subscribers, Rumble subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers, it's Kush back at it again with another New York Giants video. A not necessarily happy, but a different update video from what we had to deal with for the past, I'd say, month and a half now with the Giants. The regular season is officially over. Dave Gelman is officially gone. He's retired, even though I'm not sure he earned that uh that that the option to retire, you know what I'm saying? You know, probably should have been fired in my opinion. But we're past that. I'm not gonna do any type of recap video of Gettleman's tenure here. If you want something similar to that, I guess you could look at last night's stream, which was a great stream, by the way. We did get a lot of talk in about uh football topics before it got kind of derailed at the end. Um and it, we did try to sort of uh steer it back towards football, but um a lot of people in the chat actually liked where it was going, so I guess I kind of kept it there. But for the first hour or so, you guys are definitely going to like it if you're going for just football things. If you're trying to have fun and whatnot, that second hour is definitely going to be hilarious for you. But um, enough about that. The Giants are looking for a new general manager. And I must say, I'm pleasantly surprised because it seems like John Mara and Steve Tisch are casting an actual wide net to see who their next general manager is. Now, per Peter Schrager, made a very interesting comment today on Good Morning Football where he said that Joe Judge is not going to decide who the next Giants GM is. They're going to find that GM and that general manager will decide what the future of the Giants is, meaning that general manager is going to decide if he wants to keep Judge or not, or, you know, the coach is under Judge or not, what players he wants to keep, what players he wants to take, and stuff like that, meaning that whoever we bring in will have actual general manager powers, and hopefully that means there's no, you know, there's no handcuffs on that person like they were in Gettleman's first year or so here with the Giants. Um, and also, in addition to that, it does mean that they're giving uh, the general manager a fair shot. And, you know, hopefully the GM that comes in does do an interview with Judge. Uh, and Because I don't think it will be smart to just completely get rid of him out of the blue. But, you know, doing an interview with him and, and see what's up. And then, I didn't get this from Peter Schrager, but I read this online somewhere for anybody that's scared about Kevin Abrams being a potential GM candidate or just the next GM in general. Uh, once again, from another source that Kevin Abrams is not being considered for the general manager job at all. And so it seems like things, it seems like things are going well for the Giants for Kevin Abrams to not be considered at all to the job. Once again, that was from one source. Of course, there's a lot of other sources that say he is being considered. But with this wide net that we're casting, they're going in the right direction. So I want to believe that, you know, he's not even a, a what you would call it, a candidate. And so there's seven candidates already that the Giants have sort of requested inter, uh, requested permission to interview. I'm going to list them out right now. Bill's assistant G general manager, Joe Schoen, or Joe Shine, however you pronounce his last name. Very popular one amongst fans. Ryan Poles, the Chiefs executive director of player personnel. Monty Austin Ford, the Titans director of player personnel. Ryan Coden, Titans Ver vice president of player personnel. Adrian Wilson, the Cardinals vice president of pro scouting. Uh, San Francisco's assistant general manager, Adam Peters, who's also quickly become a fan favorite. And San Francisco's director of player personnel, Rand Carthon. Now, here's the thing. All of these guys are coming from relatively successful teams. Bills, Titans, Cardinals, Chiefs, 49ers. Especially in like the past four to five years, they've been very successful. So I already like that off bat. Um, I don't know if nobody else was kind of thinking along those same lines. Whoever our next GM is, I kind of want them to come from a place that knows how to win and knows how to build a winning team. I feel like everybody that that's looking for a new GM should have that in mind, especially in terms of recent success. And these teams have a lot of recent success. Uh, Joe Schoen, he's been with, um, let me pull this up real quick. I do have a little bit of thing here on him. He's been the assistant general manager in Buffalo since 2017. What a coincidence. That's literally the same time Buffalo started kind of turning their franchise around. They got Josh Allen the next year. They start building up that defense and they start building a winning team. And a uh, word here about Schoen from the Bills' current general manager, Brandon Bean, Bean says that he's going to be a GM. This was back in 2019. The thing about him is that he's smart enough to know that he's still learning and growing, and he's trying to get stronger at his craft. He wants to be totally ready when he gets there. Instead of just rushing to the seat and then trying to figure it out, Joe's that guy that's, that wants to have all the answers to the test before he goes and sits down. Very few people are like that. There's so many people in this business that are just trying to get into the head coach seat, the GM seat, and maybe they're not ready for it. 
I have no doubt he's going to be ready for it. He's a great communicator. He understands people. You're not going to outwork him. And this was said in 2019. So maybe now, I don't know, maybe Joe is ready for a general manager job now. Maybe he has all the answers to the test um, to use the analogy that Brandon Bean was using. Maybe he doesn't. I don't know. But there's a reason this guy is considered one of the top candidates. Uh, need I say it once again, the Bills have been one of the best teams in football in general uh, over the past four years. Joe Schoen had a hand in that. He's learned under Brandon Bean, who's recognized now as one of the best GMs in the game. And the guy had nothing but good things to say about him. When you go over to Ryan Poles with the Chiefs, another team that's been one of the best in football in general over the past four years. Uh, some people consider them the best. You know, they have the new dynasty over there or, or they have the, uh, the ingredients to be a new dynasty over there. Let me correct myself. Ryan Poles has been with the Chiefs for 12 years. So he's been there for a very very long time he's been executive director of player personnel for the past year um basically like around eight to ten months and before that he was assistant director of player personnel for three years before that he was the director of college scouting uh for two years and before that he was an actual uh college scouting coordinator for six years so pose is a guy that worked his way up just scouting which means he has all experience in the draft room He's going to have all the experience you need when it comes to evaluating players, interviewing players and things like that. And I'm assuming his strong suit is going to be just evaluating talent and getting players in the building, which is probably the most important job of a GM. And um, considering with the position that the Giants are in right now, I think we could all agree that we're going to need to build through the draft. I mean, we've been needing to build through the draft for a while now. But especially with this upcoming draft, if a guy like Ryan Poles gets hired, I'd have confidence in him knowing who to draft and things like that. The Chiefs are a team that rebuilt their offensive line in one year. They replaced every single person on that line in one year. Uh, for sure, you know the director of player personnel had to hand that. The Chiefs are a team that lost a star running back in Kareem Hunt. Uh, people forget how great Kareem Hunt's rookie year was. That man, in, as a rookie, was looking like the best running back in the NFL. And it took a little bit of time, but they managed to replace him. Uh, the next year, I, I believe they had that guy, Damian. I'm forgetting his last name. And the year after that, they uh, drafted Clyde edwards Lair. Whatever the case is, they've made their running game work since then. And the Chiefs are a team that went from having one of the worst defenses in the NFL to a defense that's good enough. Um, it's not uh, one to write home about, but it's certainly good enough for them to win games, keep them in the playoffs, and make a Super Bowl push. So this is a guy you could definitely trust to be in your front office, um, especially when it comes to evaluating talent. Uh, going down the list here, um, the two guys from the Titans, Monty and on uh, Ryan, on article on them, saying that Austin Ford, the Titans director of player personnel, was hired by Tennessee in 2020. Prior to his arrival in Nashville, he served as the New England Patriots director of college scouting, where his pack crossed with Giants head coach Joe Judge. So there we go right there. The only candidate so far, I guess, that has direct connection to the Giants because he has a direct connection to Joe Judge through the New England Patriots. And then they say Cowden, uh, the Titans vice president of player personnel, has 21 years of front office experience and has been involved in all aspects of roster building and process from free agency, assisting with trades and the NFL draft. Very, very good to hear those things about them. One thing for some reason I couldn't find, I mean, I couldn't even find a LinkedIn page on these guys was where or a Wikipedia page is where those years of experience came from. You know, were they only under Tennessee? Who, what part of, uh, what teams were they part of before? What organizations were they part of? Either way, uh, Cowden from uh, from the Titans, I think, is the guy with the most experience on this list. And then Austin Fort, it's kind of vague of exactly what he is. I feel like he's still maybe a little fresh in his career, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. We've seen new and fresh guys soar to the complete top, you know, um, to go over to the head coaching side of things. That's exactly what happened with Sean McVay. But when it comes to the GM, I'd, I'd want them to be a little bit more experienced than what I'm getting here from Ossifor, which is that he's only been in his position for a year. And before that, he was director of college scouting with the Patriots. Similar to the resume of, um, let me pull back up real quick. Uh, similar to the resume of Ryan Poles, but at least I know Poles has been with Kansas City for 12 years. And at least in those 12 years, Kansas City since 2013 or 2014 has been a really good team. So that's six or seven years of being on a winning team. And then the past four or five of being on one of the best teams in the NFL. That's not to say the Patriots aren't that, of course. Of course, the Patriots were one of the best teams in the NFL. But the Patriots aren't exactly known for drafting the best players. They're known for developing guys really, really well. It's a common misconception, but the Patriots are known for development rather than the actual drafting. 
hey guys this is post editing kush here um i realized while editing this video going through you know adding the pictures and the uh snippets of the articles that i have on each gm candidate that i completely forgot to talk about the cardinals candidate adrian wilson and that's just it would be remiss of me if i didn't add in my thoughts on him because he is a really good candidate as well i think he's the only person on the list that's a uh former football player or if he's if there is another former one he's the only one that did it at a very high level adrian wilson was an all pro safety for the cardinals i believe he also played for the bears and a couple other teams towards the end of his career but he, you know he made his his name with arizona <laughs> which is uh i guess arizona is known for having all pro safeties and just really good safeties overall at this point with how they're doing currently and whatnot and he is the director of pro scouting for the cardinals he worked his way up the ladder he was with regional scout with them in 2015 i'm sorry i misspoke before he worked his way up to the vp of uh, pro personnel not director but regardless he's been the vp of pro personnel since 2019 and been with the cardinals as an executive role since 2015 of course 2015 i believe was that year with carson palmer where they entered the playoffs and whatnot or was that 2014 it's one of those two it's also david johnson's rookie year, i want to say so you know obviously he maybe he had a hand in that but what he definitely had a hand in is the drafts since 2019 and going backwards from 2021 all the way back you got Zayvon Collins and Rondell Moore out of this year as two really good players that the Car that the Cardinals took in 2021. In 2020, they had Isaiah Simmons, Josh Jones, Lakeith Futu, Rashore Lawrence. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, eh, an eh type of draft. I, I mean, it's working out for them, right? Like maybe I think it's eh, but the Cardinals were a team that started off like six and zero this year. They're they're a good team. They have a little bit of inconsistencies to them, but they managed to build a really good team. In kind of an unconventional way especially when i go back to their 2020 i mean 2019 draft now where they took Kyler murray number one overall and they sort of said to themselves we're gonna correct the mistake that we made last year in taking josh rose and something that a lot of teams wouldn't have had you know the courage to do you know that of course has a lot to do with cliff kingsbury their head coach and whatnot but whoever the guys were in that scouting room one of them being adrian wilson their 2019 draft was pretty damn good if i say so myself i like it a lot because they got byron murphy in the second round and then they got Hakeem Butler in the fourth. They underrated um, wide receiver as well. So this is a guy, keep in mind, former player, brings a different type of thinking, maybe a different type of mentality. Uh, you know, if somebody that's been there, done that before, but also help construct the current Cardinals team that I honestly think uh, is a really good one. I think that, that this Cardinals team could be a problem for the future if they solidify their O-line, uh, they solidify their defense and whatnot. They could be a problem for years to come. And then finally getting to the 249ers guys, Adam Peters, who like I said has been a fan favorite um at least since we literally found out that he was a candidate. He's been with the 49ers as their assistant GM for the past 4 years. Once again, that timeline lines up very well. Uh, if we go to 4 years ago, that's the 2018 draft, I believe, and actually let me pull up real quick cuz we know cuz we know what they did in uh was it 2018 that they drafted Nick Bosa, actually? Let me see. 2018 NFL Draft. Nah, 2018. Who in the world did the 49ers get? They got uh, that tackle. Mike McGlinchey, I believe. Mike McGlinchey. Okay, bet. And so then 2019 is when they got Nick Bosa. Okay, yeah, yeah. It lines up now. I'm getting back my memory now. I'm getting back my memory. But Adam Peters, this is another team kind of like... Uh, I, I, the only reason I'm going to compare them to the Chiefs is because they played the Chiefs in the Super Bowl. Uh, but they've had recent success. It's a team that after um, Jim Harbaugh left, they kind of went into a little bit of a valley, a little bit of a a, a, a dip in their success. They had a couple years there where they were, they were just kind of leveling out around mediocrity and losing seasons. And they've managed to rebuild pretty, pretty good. They have a really good defense. They have a stellar defensive line. They have a good linebacking core. And they have a good secondary they have a good offensive line uh good receivers debo samuel you want to talk about receivers adam peters is a guy that's going to know how to build both of the lines offensive and de defensive he's definitely going to know not to neglect the middle linebacking core and know how to get guys there i mean we know we need a second middle linebacker we're hoping that one of the guys on the current roster can develop into that if not i'd have faith in peters uh getting somebody good after all he did draft Fred Warner and you know they did get um Kinlaw in, the, in a, a draft ago or a couple drafts ago to help uh boost up that line after they lost on um, one of the one of those I forget the defensive tackle if it's Eric Armstead or if it's the other one that went to Indianapolis but once they lost him they immediately replaced them 
with somebody good. And then speaking of um, just getting good talent, weapons, Debo Samuel is one of the best weapons. I'm going to call him a weapon because he's not just a wide receiver. He could be on the ground even through the year like we saw this past week. They got one of the best weapons in the NFL in Debo Samuel over there. So we don't need to fear ever going through a draft without getting a weapon or getting a good wide receiver. Uh, in some way, Debo Samuel, that's honestly kind of underrated in the NFL. You also think about their running game. They don't have a star running back, but for the for the past four years or so, San Francisco has been known to be very successful in the run game through run by committee, which uh, some Giants fans want to go back by. I don't necessarily have a preference. I just want to have a really good run game. And then um, in terms of uh, Rand Carthon, so Rand Carthon is another guy that has kind of a loose connection to the Giants. I believe his dad was a player for the Giants, but he came into the NFL as an undrafted free agent running back for the Colts. And the Lions from 2004 to 2006. He made the jump to executive side of things in 2008 when he became a scout for the Falcons. He was hired by the Rams in 2012 as the director of player personnel. Then in 2017 as San Francisco's director director of pro personnel. So his timeline kind of lines up the same with a uh, with uh, Adam Peters here. So what that suggests is that any success that I just talked about with Adam Peters may or may not also be success that you could relate to uh ran carthon here director of pro personnel not only the draft things i was talking about but also keep my free agency with san francisco he had a hand in it as well but those are the candidates so far guys let me know what you think put your thoughts and comments down below i really do like uh there's three of them that, that's really sticking out in my mind right now ryan pose from the chiefs joe Schoen from the bills and adam peters from the 49ers uh it's just i feel like i need more information on the guys from the titans but those three right there, I feel like, are really good candidates. And if the Giants and John Mayer are really serious about finding a new and a really good GM, uh, they're going to continue to cast a wide net where so far we've only seen one legit connection to the Giants because we all know we need somebody from the outside. But put your thoughts down below. Let me know what you think. Like, share, subscribe, and I'm out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll catch y'all in the next one.